The Illinois House returning today, the Senate's off this week, but uh, it's the beginning really of the spring legislative session. They're in till mid-May and a lot of stuff they're going to deal with. Of course, the $50 billion budget, but are they going to tackle any other gun legislation? Uh, we shall see, of course, with uh, the uh, ban on certain types of weapons being challenged in federal courts and the sheriff's. Uh, recommitting in a federal filing that uh, they believe that the gun ban is unconstitutional. We'll see how all that plays out in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, but uh, they still have stuff to deal with at the Illinois State House. Uh, in particular, you've got a bill uh, from State Representative Maura Hershauer that uh, looks to, well, I'll just read to you the synopsis here. All right. It amends the criminal code, provides that with certain exceptions, it's unlawful for any person within the state to knowingly manufacture, deliver, sell, import, or purchase, or cause to be manufactured, delivered, sold, imported, or purchased by another, an armor plate, body armor, or military helmet, and provides that certain ex expectations beginning January 1st, 2024, it is unlawful for any person within the state to knowingly possess an armor plate, body armor, or military helmets. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, this measure, uh, it hasn't moved. It remains in the Rules Committee in the House, which means it's, it's stuck right now. It's stalled, all right? Now, when that gets moved to a substantive committee, it will have to have a hearing, uh, and then it'll have to have three readings in the House, and go through the process to get into the Senate, and then if it passes there, then it could go to the governor. So we're far away from that, but we know that watching the state legislature, these things can happen in rapid succession. So uh, we'll watch that bill and uh, some other bills at the state house. So that's from somebody who wants to regulate um, uh, defense in the state of Illinois, uh, while a uh, different approach at the state house comes from State Senator Neil Anderson, and he has a bill. Uh, it's uh, Senate Bill 2106 that amends the General Assembly Operations Act and provides that any member of the General Assembly who wishes to introduce a bill pertaining to the firearm must be able to prove that he or she has completed firearm training requirements under the Concealed Carry Act, range safety training, and basic knowledge of test of calibers and gauges of firearms. I talked with State Senator Neil Anderson about this, and uh, he shared some of his thoughts uh, of what the bill ultimately is and why he filed this thing at the Illinois State House. With anything, Greg, I think the biggest thing is lack of education um, uh, or, or apathy. And firearms are, are one of the biggest culprits of that because the the mainstream media focuses on, you know, uh, flashing a, an AR-15 on the screen and saying, yeah, this is an assault rifle, this is a weapon of war, when in fact, that's not the case at all. Um, but it's easy to buy into that because they look scary, they look very similar to what you see um, and clips on on the news of our military carrying. They're not the same firearm, though. And so it's instead of people doing their due diligence and, and informing themselves, they just go with the emotional because that's that's easier to do. So education is a huge part of it. And I've invited many of my colleagues from uh, from Chicago and the suburbs to come up to my district. And, you know, my district um, or my area, I should say, is home to Springfield Armory, Rock River Armory. Uh, Lewis Machine and Tool. Um, so I have a lot of firearm manufacturers up here, and I've invited them to come out, see how these these firearms are built, see the economic impact, and go to the shooting range and, and uh, have one of their professional shooters and myself introduce you to the sport of shooting and how important it is. And I uh, can't get any of them to take me up on that. So, so uh, Senator Anderson talking about kind of the impetus behind his bill uh, to require certain level of training. He, again, uh, gives a brief synopsis of it. The bill requires that anybody that's going to um, introduce any kind of anti-gun legislation has to have the equivalent of a concealed carry course. So we've seen, of course, minority uh, Republicans. Uh, they're, they're in the super minority in both the House and Senate. They file legislation. It doesn't really go anywhere. So uh, he has a separate bill that would void the FOID, and we talked about that last week, the firearm owner identification card required in Illinois if you want to buy and possess guns or ammo. Uh, and uh, he, he wants to get rid of that. The FOID card is being challenged in courts, and there's a pending court's case in Sangamon County. Uh, the status of that still 
pending. So we'll uh, we'll follow that as soon as that drops, however that goes. Uh, but uh, he wants to get rid of the Foyd card. Uh, he knows that that's not necessarily going to go anywhere in a state like Illinois, but he wants to start the conversation. What about this measure to require that uh, legislators actually take concealed carry courses before they are able to vote on legislation? Uh, you've got uh, him providing his rationale on uh, it's to start a conversation. Is it political sarcasm? Uh, maybe. There's a little bit of of, uh, of sarcasm in there, but at the same time, it, I, I want them to understand before they push some of this to understand uh, about firearms. Greg, I've been on the Senate floor and had debates with the other side when they're using terms like we need to get these automatic rifles off the streets. That's not a thing. Automatic firearms have been banned since 1984. But yet, they're using that uh, that line because that's what the that's what um, that's what the emotional line is, right? Um, and it's not. It's there. It's so completely false. There's so many falsehoods in from automatic rifle to assault rifle to weapon of war to all these trigger terms that feed off of people's emotions, it's just, it's nonsense. It's all false. It, it couldn't be farther from the truth. AR-15 does not stand for assault rifle or automatic rifle. It stands for Armalite rifle. It's the company that invented it, which is right in my backyard. Um, weapon of war, AR-15 has never been used in the theater of war ever by the United States military. Um, it's all these little terms that feed on people's emotions and if you just educate yourself a little bit, and I'm not, I'm asking everybody to educate themselves, but at least the legislators that are voting on this stuff, please educate yourself. So again, that's uh, State Senator Neil Anderson talking a bit about his legislation to require lawmakers who want to file legislation about guns that they have the equivalent of concealed carry and range training and a basic understanding of uh, gun calibers and gauges and such. Now, uh, when it comes to the uh, the, the AR-15, uh, I'm sure that the supporters of gun regulations will point to, you know, a, a military rifle has the uh, fully auto switch, the uh, the burst switch, and the single shot switch, while civilian guns only have the single shot switch. They don't have burst or full auto. However, I'm sure that the gun control advocates will point to certain switches that can be added to these lower receivers of AR-15s to give you that option of a burst or a full auto. Uh, but that's obviously already illegal to do that. Uh, but should that be the impetus of banning these very common modern sports rifles, such as an AR-15? Because 170 guns are banned right now uh, in the state of Illinois with uh, litigation pending. Uh, and State Senator Neil Anderson looking to hopefully get people educated better on firearms before they go and actually pass legislation that impacts 2.4 million gun owners in the state of Illinois. All right, got to take a break. It is Springfield's Morning News on WMAY.